affect each other population size. Ooh, that's a, what do you think? Yeah, but that he didn't say, he didn't, the lecture didn't base on population size, population okay. growth. Okay, so let's give it, okay, so this is when, no, when you see an answer like this, I want you to say to yourself, okay, let me give it about a 60% chance. Okay. Okay, and this is what I do. I put numbers on my answers. Because then if I have two answers and I gave 160, 140, based on whatever keywords are within that answer, I'm able to decipher and say, ah, I don't like this. I kind of like that one. I don't like this. I kind of like that one. I don't like this. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that one. Okay. I know I'm crazy. Here we go. B, how the carrying capacity of an ecosystem is determined. Maybe, yeah. You mentioned that too. Mm, okay, I would give that maybe a 40% chance. Now, I don't remember writing down carrying capacity. Where's that? Carrying capacity is resources, fine food, and water space that they may have. That's yeah, a very specific detail. Let me, give you, let me show you how this works. We have what is the lecture mainly about and specific details. The carrying capacity is a small detail within the lecture. It's not what the main lecture is about. <laughs> okay. Okay, so although that may be true, although it may be true, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the main idea and what it's about. That mm. is a very, very important detail for both of you. Does that make sense, Clarissa? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. So we're going to leave that there because that's a very SD, a specific detail. I don't really like it. Let's go into another one. A new theory regarding cycles and predator and population sizes? No. Is it a new theory? No, no. it's called theory. the boom and bust. It's an old theory. Fantastic, Clarissa. I think it's A. <laughs> okay, ooh, D. How researchers monitor the population size of animal species in the wild? That was just a study. It was the a wild. study. It was just a study. Is that what the main lecture is? I kind of like no. A. I kind mm -hmm. of like A. Very mm -hmm. good. All right. I'm liking it. Ooh, I'm liking that. Okay, so here we go. Let's mm -hmm. go into the next one. <gasps> what point does the professor make when he discusses the carrying? Oh, there you go, Clarissa. This is your thing. Oh, I found it. I got it in my notes. Wonderful. Okay, so here we go. What does this mean? Carrying capacity. Okay. Daniel, did you write it down? Yeah, I had a current capacity of resources for um, food, space, um, eco ecology, environment, environment. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Every ecosystem has a carrying capacity finite. There's only so much food and water species to go around and various factors help slow the population growth and stop the boom. And then he goes in to say it defines them as environmental resistance, close proximity, spread of disease, food shortages. These are the different things, right? And then obviously the relationship between the prey and predator is an example of environmental resistance too. Now you see my little acronym. Example, I put EX. Environ, I didn't write mental. Resist, I only oh, wrote resist, resist, not resistance. Now, and then there's a high population boom or boost predators, species, more food. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, okay, if there's this, there's this. If there's oh, this, there's this, it. it affects one yeah. another. Okay, so this is gonna be hard, but let's look at all of these answers. A, the availability of food is more important for species than the availability of space. Hmm. Does it say anything about it being more important? No. And no. so this is why, although that does sound good on deaf ears, so to speak, I don't have it in my notes. I'm and it resist. did not use the comparison, more important. I did not write that down. This is why I told you writing down the comparisons are very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got that one. Then we have B, the amount of environmental resistance in an ecosystem does not change over time. No. No, I think it, it changes. changes like crazy. Like crazy, yeah. And yeah, it changes very often. People are dying and people are flying and getting smacked. Yeah, a lot of things are happening. 
Okay, C, environmental resistance controls the population size of species in an in ecosystem. Yeah. Yes. yes. I like C. I like C. I'm going to give C a 90% chance. Yeah. And then D, the population size of most species increases at a constant rate. No, look, no, look what I wrote down here. Decre that's right. Nothing. Yep. Uh -huh. Degree. dropping their population now they're basically saying that most species is just going to increase forever but if we look at even what's happening in the oceans right now a lot of populations are decreasing because of overfishing you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so i'm just putting one and one together although that is not in the in the audio i'm still saying man that sounds like a a bunch of bullshit <laughs> okay so here we go c is your answer you see how I'm walking you through this process now, got it then? Yeah, these are with my notes. I don't know if you're going to be able to do it with your notes, but you're able to eliminate a lot of the answers. And this is the very no. big key. Okay, what's up? Yeah. Talk to me. Oh no no, I had I had I perceived that I had that one. What, what was that? Yeah, because I had the uh, this no only that note I think <laughs> the environment uh, resistant. In the starvation. You said the vitamin resistant. Resistant, yeah, between oh, species okay. and, and, and vitamin, yeah. Good, good, good. And that's exactly what I had right here. These three lines that I mm -hmm. took that I'm highlighting in red, bold, and italicized, that's mm -hmm. exactly what that C is. So that's very, very good stuff, got it in you. Good. All right, okay. let's keep it going. Ooh. How did the researchers test the links between acorns, white-footed mites, and gypsy moths in a forest? The links. Okay. Now, a few years ago, this is what I had. Oh, there's an experiment. So researchers and experiment. And so let's see here. Now, what I wrote down, I put one section, large number of extra acorns. Another area, traps for mice. Plethora of acorn, moth population dropped in numbers. Meanwhile, low mice area, moth exploded. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if I look at the other one, the few years ago, there was an experiment, and this is probably what they mean by researchers. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says that, uh, what is it? You had uh, oak trees, gypsy, and the mice. Acorns, main food source. Mice enjoyed eat, eating the gypsy, the gypsy moss. So the population spikes, but then the larvae eat at the oak trees and it puts stress on the plant. And they, I think I put reduced acorn and then something about increasing it with the spike, mice population smaller. More white-footed mice spray on the gypsy, acorn back to normal. So it was hard to confirm. So they did another experiment. So by looking at those two, those two ideas, we got the researchers mm -hmm. and then another experiment, I believe, at which his friend made. Now, let's look at this. Again, I'll repeat it. How did researchers test the links between acorns, white-footed mice, and gypsy moths in a forest? They supplied an additional food source? Mm. What was um. Do you see anything in regards to an additional food source? No. Extra no. corn. Extra acorn. No. That, that's not an additional food source. An additional food source okay. is something outside of acorn. So maybe acorn and cupcakes. Okay, that's the additional food source that I'm actually looking for, right? So good. Okay. How about B? They introduced gypsy moths to areas where there had been none. Maybe. Okay, maybe. All right, let's give it a 40, 50% chance. All right, okay, let's look at C. They cleared oak trees yeah. from some areas where both okay. animal species live. Did they clear any oak trees? Did they cut down oak trees? No. No, because no. that would be illegal. <laughs> okay, that would be illegal. You can't just go down cutting trees. No, in America, that's illegal. Here in Thailand, you get money for it. Okay. D, oh, hello. Hello, baby. Okay. Sorry. All right. D, they manipulated 
the numbers of mice and acorns in some areas? No. Ooh, why? Why no? Uh, they didn't count the numbers. The how no, many? No, they manipulated. Meaning, manipulated. How did they manipulate? They well, they, mm -hmm. they put a large number of extra acorns over here. And then in oh, another yeah. area, they put mice. Yeah, B they, is yeah, a they, beautiful yeah. answer. They manipulated okay. it by okay. putting a large number of acorns over here and they put mice traps mm -hmm. over here. That's a manipulation. Okay, that's the answer. Fantastico. I'm loving it. All righty. All righty, ladies. So we're going to go D. Let's see. Who knows? We might get a bunch of answers wrong, but let's check it out. I'm just trying to walk you through the process in terms of coaching, okay? If I get it all wrong, God, then going to be like, hey, mira, puñeta, give me my money. Give me my dinero. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? The little black boy, the little black boy, the gift. Hey, mira, blah, blah. Okay, give me my money. Okay, okay, I'll see you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number five. Why does the professor mention non oh shit i didn't write this down i'm gonna be honest with you uh, non, -native. non native species yeah when they are non native species they invade and they increase in amount there we go that's right mm -hmm. oh i got it i got it i got it it's right here thank you clarissa fantastico so here we go <laughs> with non native species move into an area they're invasive species like cockroaches like um, those weird cactus that are living mm -hmm. out there in Kenya that are destroying all cattle and killing everything. Those are invasive species. A plant or animal, mm -hmm. no natural predatory boom population. That's what I wrote down. Mm -hmm. So let's look at these answers. To show that some species cannot be transplanted easily to new environments? No. Mm -mm. Okay. To give an example of rapid population growth, Maybe. Maybe, Maybe yeah. because predatory boom population, I kind of like B. I'll give B a 80%. Okay, let's look at C. To emphasize that species with rapidly growing populations harm ecosystem. Maybe. Ooh, that could be maybe too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, 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 look. But rapid growth followed decline stress on environment. Ooh, okay, so I'm gonna give that one a good 70%. Let's see. I'll let you know what you ladies think. And D, the last one, to introduce a study on the change in population size of certain species. Was there a study? No. 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 So I don't like, I don't like, uh, 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 I don't like, I don't like A, I don't like D, but we have B and C. So what do you think? We have to give an example of rapid population growth to emphasize that a species with rapidly growing population harm. C. B. C. Okay, Gadadenia says C. <laughs> Clarissa says B. I'm going to put B, but write down on your paper C, Gadadenia. Let's see who is right. Because I yeah. don't see anything about harming. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, see anything harming. about harming. Yeah. I don't see that. That's the thing. Okay. So I'm just not going to go because that's what I'm a little bit scared of. I'm like, okay, how does it harm? Although it may be true, it does harm ecosystems, no doubt, but it wasn't said in the lecture. Mm -hmm. So, okay, all right. Oh, I hate this one. What can be inferred about the professor when he says this? So we have to listen again. What can be inferred? You have to think between the lines. What can be inferred about this? Okay, let's do it. To start out, we'll look at some key concepts. Key concepts. That's it? That's no. it? King yeah. is happy. Okay. Key concepts are food, shelter, and equals a movement cycle. But the thing is, we're not necessarily looking at why he says this. We're looking mm -hmm. at to why. Implied. Why is it? And the thing is, there's one, and by, uh, one analysis, before, right? Mm. So this is the area. We don't... We don't care about the key concepts. We're trying to figure out why he says this. Mm -hmm. Now, look at this. It says he does not know the answer to the student's question. Did the student ask a question? No, that's not the correct answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. He wants to correct a statement he made earlier? No. I no. think. No. Mm -mm. 
Okay, well, let's look at C. He thinks the term the student used is correct. Did someone use an incorrect term? No, no, no. Maybe B or B. Would like to redirect the discussion. This I like, is like that business one. English. Yeah, I like yeah, I like that. Yeah. She's like, I like that one. I like that one. I like that. <laughs> and, and it's because when you redirect, when you state something like this, be like, okay, well, we're gonna start out with some key concepts. Let's check out some key things that just back, backs what I just said. And this is exactly what he did. He's like, okay, well, let's check out these couple of things and let's go from there. Good. All right. So D. I believe would be the answer. Okay, ladies, let's go. How many answers do we get? What do you think? Got it then, yeah. Clarissa, how many answers do you think we got? Huh, maybe all of them are correct. Oh, yeah, all of them. Let's do it. Tres, dos, uno. <laughs> all of correct, them. Correcto, all of them are correct. <laughs> Muy bien, fantástico. Okay. Now, here is the main, this is the, it's not so much about getting everything correct. It's about how did we answer it from my perspective, my vantage point? How did I break down the question so